So we did a, a bit of a prune last year and you can see in the center of that plant, we've tried to cut away any branches that were, were growing towards the middle. And we've tried to encourage this kind of outward growing kind of vase shaped open centered plant. So that's kind of gone quite well, but um, we've just got too much of this thin spindly growth here. We want to encourage some thick new stems. So if you look at this stem here, this kind of reddy brown stem there, can you see him? Um, I can see that just here, can you see that little kind of line on the stem there, horizontal line, just here. That looks like where a leaf has snapped off in the past and there will be a dormant bud. If there's not one there, there'll be one lower down. So I'm gonna cut just above that bud there to um, encourage a new shoot to come out from there and continue growing away from the center of the plant. Let's give that a go. I'm trying to do this left-handed because I've got the camera in the right hand. So let's see if we can do it now. That's probably left a bit more of a stump than I would like, but um, we've cut him and within a month or two, we should see a shoot coming from there and growing up. So we're gonna repeat that even on these dead looking, kind of gray looking stems, there will be dormant buds there that uh, just need encouraging out. So that thicker stem will need my loppers. Let's go and get them. There we are. So you can see my loppers poised. Let's just see whether we can get through that stem there. <laughs> can you see what we're doing now? Um, we are, you know, we really are going to um, give this a really hard prune. Uh, so I'm gonna carry on and take off some of those other branches now. Give me a minute. Struth. <laughs> I've, um, I've shocked myself here. You can see I'm just leaving kind of two, three, four inch long stems here. That's the last branch to be cut off now. A little bit of splitting going on there. I might tidy that up with a secateurs just now. Um, so there we are. I'm gonna get rid of these um, lovely thorny stems, but I, I kind of cut them up. I'll, get, I'll let you into a little secret. I, um, I cut them up into short lengths and I hide them just behind my um, gold Brian Escalonia shrub there. So they're out of sight. Um, but those little thorny stems come in very handy if we get cats visiting our garden, as can happen occasionally. And you'll notice some of our most popular videos are about how to stop cats pooing in your garden. So we put um, thorny stems on the soil in any soft areas of ground that the, um, the cats might be attracted to. And uh, once they've walked over one or two of them, they won't come back in a hurry. So there's always a use for your waste produce in the garden. Right, now we can see the, uh, the woods for the trees, if you pardon the pun. And of course, one of the advantages of getting rid of all those prickly stems that were there before is we can now quite easily get on underneath the plant and pull up some of those weeds. There's a little bit of um, root uh, that I need to dig out as well. I'm not going to dig down too much. I'm just going to get a little small hand fork or a little trowel and just prise those those um, roots out from these um, creeping jenny plants <clears throat> so that we're not damaging the roots of the rose. Um, and I'm going to clear a bit more space here and then we'll get some, some of that um, um, nutritious, uh, kind of blooming amazing mulch to go to go on top. A couple of things I should mention. Um, if you're thinking of giving your your rose a good old hard prune like this, timing is very important. And um, I did this at about half past four. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, timing in terms of what time of year uh, you do it um, is important. Um, so we've done this in quite early spring, um, in, in March. Um, so that all the new growth that, that comes on. And um, I would expect the new growth to be right up here um, by, you know, by June and uh, in flower. That new growth will um, be fine 
coming out through the spring and into, into the summer. If we pruned back, let's say in September like this, there was a danger then that the plant will try and put on lots of new growth into the autumn and the early winter, and that new growth would still be too fresh when the colder winter weather comes or the, um, the winter storms, so it can damage the plants. So if you're gonna do a hard prune like this, do it early in the spring, which in the UK means kind of first half of March, if you can, depending on where you are in the UK, March, let's just say March, March. Um, that would be fine. And this really works well for a bush rose. Uh, in old language, that might be a hybrid tea or a floribunda. If you've got a, a bushy, shrubby rose, then this sort of hard prune can work well. If you're looking at a climbing rose, then that's a slightly different uh, method of, of pruning because with a climbing rose you need to have some of those strong taller stems um, climbing up the wall or the fence but for a bush rose uh, you can do this in spring so two things make sure it's a bush rose and if you're going to do it um, do it in um, early spring right let's get those weeds cleared and then we'll get that um, that, uh, that mulch on top there we go so we've got the worst of the weeds out you can see that I've left a little clump there and his little mate at the back. That's because they are Welsh poppies, one of my favourite kind of spring and summer uh, flowers and um, much loved by the bees. So I'll let, those, um, I'll let those carry on over there. But now there's a bit of root to there. Let's get rid of him. Come on, fella. There we go. So now we're ready to get our mulch. Um, tipped out on there now this this mulch um blooming amazing there are other brands may be available um is um anaerobic digestate yeah look there's two big long words for you for no extra charge so it's a new development over the last kind of i don't know 10 15 years here in the uk at least um as we're looking for alternatives to um to peat um and trying to find um sustainable ways to um, look after our soil and encourage healthy soil with lots of kind of um, microorganisms living in harmony with what we're doing and helping the plants to thrive and having a strong ecosystem below ground as well as above ground and this seems to fit the bill um, I'll, I'll spare you the science um, there is another video that I did well, a couple of years ago on my channel using rocket grow uh, which is a an alternative to um, Blooming Amazing, uh, and that gives you a bit more detail as to how this amazing process um, of producing green energy, but also green waste, um, works. And without any further ado, let's tip this stuff out. Whoa. That looks good, doesn't it? Whoa. Lovely jabbly. I wonder what that smells like. Let's have a, let's have a little sniff, shall we? Actually, it's got no smell whatsoever to it. Um, so we're going to spread that around over here. And this, you know, serves several purposes. It kind of keeps some of the the, the smaller weeds at um, at bay. Um, it uh, it releases nutrients. It deters slugs. It holds in the moisture. Um, unfortunately, one thing it can't do is make you a cup of tea. And I'm almost ready for my cuppa now. Um, well, I'm quite pleased with that. That looks kind of fresh and clean and poised to leap into new growth and hopefully some new, new flowers. For my next video, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be looking at that plant there. So that's bronze fennel, which we've been growing as a companion plant to this rose to help prevent um, aphids and black fly and so on um, causing a big problem. The fennel attracts the predator insects, um, which will then live off the uh will live off the aphids and green flies should they venture onto that rose if you want more information on that look out for our next video thanks so much for watching and we'd love to hear from you if you've got any qu uh, comments or questions even some suggestions um always very welcome make your comments below in our youtube channel in the comment section thanks a lot enjoy your garden